Hello and welcome to Jason's Storytime. My name's Jason Leland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And if you'd like to support this free service, please go to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. Thank God very much. Right, today I'm going to... Oh, okay. I'm going to read a book called... The Tale of Mrs. Tiggywinkle. Yep, and uh, it says here it was for the real little Lucy of Newlands. Ah, so it's uh, clearly it was a relative. According to this, it was written by Potter Beatrix. Contributor names, okay, uh, eighteen sixty six to nineteen forty three. And it was written in 1905. Yay. So here we go. I've got no idea if I've ever heard of this one before. So please, please let it be readable. Okay. I'm trying to... Actually, I've got one, really? Right, I've got the, the pad working. So, there's a picture of a hedgehog, I think. Doing some ironing. But looking in the mirror of the iron. Unless it's an actual mirror, shaped like an iron. I'm not sure. So here we go. The Tale of Mrs. Tiggy Winkle by Beatrix Pottet. Beat, well, whistle then. <whistles> by Beatrix Potter. Author of The Tale of Peter Rabbit, etc. New York, Frederick Warren and Co. 36 East 22nd Street. Whoops, oh, Danny. Um, wow, it's even, this is from the, the, I've got this from LOC, L-O-K, L-O-C dot gov, it's a website, and it's the Library of Congress, September the 23rd, 1905. Wow. So I'm just trying to get, it's quite difficult uh, to navigate this thing, but you probably don't care, do you? Just get on with the story. Okay, I'm doing it. So there's another picture of, I don't know, a cat or something. Okay, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a little girl called Lucy, who lived at a farm called Little Town. She was a good little girl, only she was always losing her pocket handkerchiefs. We all have that problem, don't we? Tell me about it. Oh. One day, little Lucy came into the farm yard crying. Oh, she did cry so. I've lost my pocket handkerchief. Uh, three handkins and penny. Have you seen them, tabby kitten? I'm just waiting for the next page to come up. Okay. And these are basically photocopies of the original book, so it's, it's a little bit more difficult to navigate, but. I'm sure you just get on with it. All right. The kitten went on washing her white paws. 
So Lucy asked a speckled hen. Sally, Henny Penny, have you found <clears throat> three pocket handkins? I never called them handkins. Handkerchief, handkins. Huh? But the speckled hen ran into a barn, clucking. I go barefoot, barefoot, barefoot. Which doesn't make any sense, I don't think. I go barefoot, barefoot, barefoot. The picture of her talking to a hen. Huh. Right. How many more pages have I got? Was that the end of that chapter, was it? And then Lucy asked Cock, Robin, sitting on a twig. Cock, Robin, looked sideways at Lucy with his bright black eye and he flew over a stile and away. Pretty rude, aren't they, these animals? Lucy climbed upon the stile and looked upon at the hill behind a little town. A hill that goes up, up, into the clouds as though it had no top. And a great way up the hillside she thought she saw some white things spread upon the grass. If I was to read that again, I probably would have stressed the white things. But, nah, too late now. So this is page 16. Lucy scrambled up the hill as fast as her short legs would carry her. She ran along a steep pathway, up and up, until Little Town was right away down below. She could have dropped a pebble down the chimney. Really? I mean, you have to have quite a good aim, wouldn't you, to actually, if the town's all the way down below, you could drop a pedal, a, pe a pedal, a pebble, but for it to actually hit a chimney. Yeah. Well, maybe, I mean, who am I to argue? I wasn't there. Now it's got a picture of her looking at the mountains and looking down at the little town okay so now we're just skipping through some a lot of blank pages here okay now we're on to page 21 presently she came to a spring bubbling out from the hillside Someone had stood a tin can upon a stone to catch the water, but the water was already running over, for the can was no bigger than an egg cup. A can the size of an egg cup. No, I mean, I suppose some sweet corn... Uh, why can't I say this without whistling? Some sweet corn cans are quite little, aren't they? Just trying to... F no, but even that wouldn't hold an egg. The egg would go right through. Well, not all the way through, because it's got a bottom. A metal bottom, but... It wouldn't hold it. No, I don't know any cans or tins that would... be the size of an egg holder. Or an egg cup, rather. No, I think she's making it up. Another tall story from Mrs. Potter. And where the sand upon the path was wet, there were footmarks of a very small person. Now, here we go. 
So it's going to be a small person. Everything it has is small. Yeah. So it's going to have uh, a bicycle that's the size of a pea or something like that. Lucy ran on and on. The path ended under a big rock. The grass was short and green, and there were clothes props cut from bracken stems with lines of plated rushes and a heap of tiny clothes pins, but no pocket handkerchiefs. Oh, she's not still on that, is she? Blindness, oh, she's got one trap mind. Pocket handkerchiefs, pocket handkerchiefs. <laughs> yeah, she just, I thought for a second that she was getting excited because it was an adventure, a new adventure. She discovered something like a tiny little footprint and a tiny little tin the size of an egg, you know, egg cup. But no, no, handkerchiefs, handkerchiefs. All I can think about. One track mind. But there was something else, a door. Straight into the hill. And inside it, someone was singing. I'm going to sing now, so, but I'll try and do it quietly. Lily white and clean, oh, with little thrills between, oh, smooth and hard, a red rusty spot, never here been seen, oh. So there's a picture of her looking at the door. There's a lot of pictures of the back of her. Oh no, there's now one at the front of her. I hadn't made up their mind what she looked like. Until they got to page 26. Lucy knocked once, twice, and interrupted the song. A little frightened voice called out, Who's that? Lucy opened the door. And what do you think there was there inside the hill? A nice clean kitchen with a flagged door. What on earth is a flagged door? A door with a flag on it? And wooden beams just like any other farm kitchen. Only the ceiling was so low that Lucy's head was instantly decapitated. No, Lucy's head nearly touched it. And she was only two foot tall herself. And the pots and pans were small. And so was everything there. Where's my bloody handkerchiefs? I want my bloody handkerchiefs. Ooh, said Lucy. No, she didn't. There was a nice, hot, singy smell. What's a singy smell? What, a musical smell? Or is that singy? Singy smell, like burning hair. Uh, and at the table, with an iron in her hand, stood a very stout, short person, staring anxiously at Lucy. Her print gown was tucked up and she was wearing a large apron over her striped petticoat. Lucy picked her up and blew her nose with her, mistaking all those clothes for her handkerchief. And they lived happily ever after. No, that didn't happen. Her little black nose went sniffle, sniffle, snuffle. And her eyes went twinkle, twinkle. And underneath her cap, where Lucy had yellow curls, that little person had prickles. Bear with me. 
of an imagination, this one. I wonder if it really happened. There's a few pictures of, um, you know, the, the, the lady. Who are you? said Lucy. Have you seen my pocket handkins? The little person made a bob curtsy. Oh, yes, if you please. And my, my name is Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. Oh, yes, if you please, ma'am. I'm, I'm an excellent clear starcher. And she took something out of a clothes basket and spread it on the ironing blanket. Just waiting for the next page to load up. Um, What's that thing? said Lucy. That's not my pocket hankin. Oh no, if you please, um... That's a little scarlet waistcoat belonging to Cock Robin. And she ironed it and folded it and put it on one side. Looks like a hedgehog to me. Or a wolf. I don't know. Then she took something else off a clothes horse. That isn't my penny, said Lucy. Oh no, if you please, um, that's a damask tablecloth belonging to Jenny Wren. Look how it's stained with currant wine. It's very bad to wash said Mrs. Tickywinkle. <sighs> Mrs. Tickywinkle's nose went sniffle, sniffle, snuffle, and her eyes went twinkle, twinkle, and she fetched another hot iron from the fire. How many irons did she have in the fire? <laughs> Too many? And, uh, Right, I'm now on page 45, okay, uh, okay. There's one of my pocket hankings, cried Lucy, and there's my penny. Mrs. Tiggywinkle ironed it and goffered it. I'm not sure what that means. I don't think I'd want something goffered. I think if I collected something from the uh, dry cleaning and they said, oh, by the way, we goffered your trousers. I might. I'd have questions. I think. Uh, okay. And she took out the frills. Oh, that is lovely, said Lucy. Uh, and what are those long yellow things with fingers like gloves? Oh, that's a pair of stockings belonging to Sally Hennypenny. Look how she's wore the heels out with scratching in the yard. She'll very soon go barefoot, said Mrs. Tiggywinkle. <clears throat> okay, okay, keep going. <laughs> well, I'm just getting to the next page, the next page. Uh, come on, come on. Well, that's another hanker sniff. 
but it isn't mine, it's red. Oh no, if you please them, that one belongs to old Mrs. Rabbit. And it did so smell of onions, I've had to wash it separately. I can't get out the smell. There's another one of mine, said Lucy. In her most elegant voice. What are those funny little white things? That's a pair of mittens belonging to Tabby Kitten. I only have to iron them. She washes them herself. Oh, there's my last pocket hankin', said Lucy. She's obsessed, isn't she? Hankin', hankin', handkerchief, handkerchief. She's not interested. She's just made a new friend. All this new information, all she cares about is her handkerchiefs. I don't know. If nothing else, she's she's found someone to do her laundry. And what are you dipping into the basket of starch? Oh, they little dicky shirt fronts belonging to Tom Tit Mouse. Most terrible, particular, said Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. Now I've finished my ironing, I'm going to air some clothes. And then a motorbike went past in the distance. As often happens in children's stories what are these dear soft fluffy things said Lucy oh those are woolly coats belonging to the little lambs at Shellgile will their jackets take off asked Lucy oh yes if you please them, look at the sheep mark on the shoulder. And here's one marked for gate scarf, and three that come from a little town. They're always marked at washing. And Mrs. And said Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. And she hung up all sorts and sizes of clothes. Small brown coats of mice and one velvety black mole skin waistcoat and a red tail scope with no tail belonging to squirrel and a red tail coat with no tail belonging to squirrel nutkin and a very much shrunk blue jacket belonging to Peter Rabbit. Oh, I have to mention Peter Rabbit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, publicised, advertiser, you have a book, yeah, yeah. And a petticoat, not marked, that has gone lost in the washing. And at last, the basket was empty. At last. Then Mrs. Tiggy Winkle made tea. A cup for herself and a cup for Lucy. They sat before the fire on a bench and looked sideways at one another. Sounds a bit awkward. Lucky one, they didn't have bad necks. That's a bit awkward. Yeah. Mrs. Tiggy Winkle's hand holding the teacup, was very, very brown and 
very, very wrinkly with the soap suds. And all through her gown and her cap, there were hairpins sticking the wrong end out. So that Lucy didn't like to sit too near her. Plus she smelt of fabric softener. I've added that bit. Never fancy the idea of doing someone's laundry, really. No, I don't like what I don't like touching my own underpants. Okay, so when they had finished tea, they tied up the clothes in bundles, and Lucy's pocket handkerchiefs were fondled up, folded rather, folded up inside her clean penny and fastened with a silver safety pin and then they made up the fire with a turf and came out and locked the door and hid the key under the door sill it's not really hidden if you do it in front of someone is it then away down the hill trotted Lucy and Mrs. Tiggy Winkle with the bundles of clothes. All the way down the path, little animals came out of the fern to meet them. The very first that they met were Peter Rabbit and Benjamin Bunny. There's a picture of a rabbit. Uh, well, I'm just trying to get to the next page. It's page 75. And she gave them their nice clean clothes. And all the little animals and birds were so very much obliged to dear Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. Sounds like a nice neighbour. So that at the bottom of the hill, when they came to the stile, there was nothing less to, left to carry except Lucy's one little bundle. Surprised she wasn't already holding it myself. I'm never letting these go ever again. I love my handkerchiefs. Mm. Okay. So, uh, page 80. Lucy scrambled up the stile with the bundle in her hand and then she turned to say good night and to thank the washerwoman. <laughs> the washerwoman. It's a bit rude, isn't it? After all that, yeah, let's call her a washerwoman. But that was a very odd, there was a very odd thing. Mrs. Tiggy Wingle had not waited either for thanks or for the washing bill. She was running, running, running up the hill. And there was, and where was her white frilled cap and her shawl? and her gown, and her petticoat. Ah. So there's a picture of Lucy there, and she's standing holding her handkerchiefs, but she looks a bit bewildered, a bit, a bit torn between, well, she, she kind of doesn't want to think about anything else but her handkerchiefs, but she's intrigued. She doesn't quite know what to do because her whole life all she's ever really thought about was her handkerchiefs and now it's like, oh, it's weird. So this is the last page. And how small she had grown and how brown 
and covered with prickles. Why, Mrs. Tiggywinkle was nothing but a hedgehog. There's a bit here that says in brackets. Now, some people say that little Lucy had been asleep upon the stile. But then how could she have found three clean pocket handkins and a penny pinned with a silver safety pin? And besides, I have seen that door into the back of the hill called Cat Bells. And besides, I am well acquainted with dear Mrs. Tiggywinkle. The end. Hmm. Yeah.